Welcome to the Neuro Ophthalmology Reading Centre training video for the Humphrey Visual Field Test. This video is part of the Neuro Ophthalmology Reading Centre training suite and should be used alongside the Standard of Procedures documents and clinical research forms for your study. Room and device setup. The testing area should preferably be situated in an isolated room away from communal areas and sources of noise or potential disturbances. The machine should be switched on with the room lights turned off to allow for the correct calibration of the instrument. As all identifiable patient data will be removed from the final test printout, standard patient demographic details should be entered. If the patient wears glasses to correct their distance vision, the lens prescription should be determined using automated lens for symmetry and entered into the field analyzer. The required additional amount of spherical power will be automatically applied. The parameters for visual field testing are study specific. Therefore, any deviations from the default settings should be noted and changed accordingly. In this example, we are using the 24-2 CETA standard protocol. For the exact details of the testing parameters required for your study, please refer to the study protocol. Patient setup. Getting the best possible result from any patient performing a visual field test goes far beyond reading them a set of instructions. Here, we have provided a list of things to consider and communicate that help orientate and inform the patient in order to improve their overall performance. Introduce yourself and explain what you do. It's a simple thing, but it helps put the patient at ease. Explain why the test is being done. It's helpful for a patient to understand the reason behind the test and what information is being gathered and assessed. Explain what you are doing as you are doing it. If you are going to measure the patient's glasses or turn off the lights, for example, communicate when and why you are doing this. Address misconceptions. Patients who have undergone testing in the past without being given a good explanation will often form their own conclusions as to how or why the test is done. Is the patient comfortable? Ask. Being sat in the required position for this test is not a natural posture, so it's vital to check rather than assume that the patient feels comfortable. Removing test anxiety. Patients often feel under pressure because the nature of performing a test is automatically associated with passing or failing. It is helpful if a patient understands that they are having a test rather than being tested and that we just need some input from them to get a result. Checking for errors. Aside from the on-screen false positive indicator, if you suspect a patient is over-responding, pausing the test for a short moment without informing the patient will confirm if the buzzer is routinely being pressed when no lights are being shown. Encourage and update the patient. Let the patient know that they are doing well and give occasional updates on how far through the test they are. This will help keep the patient focused on the task rather than how much time it is taking. Know when to intervene. The key aim is to reduce error and keep fixation loss to a minimum. It is the responsibility of the assessor to communicate to the patient how and when adjustments are needed. It is more effective to address compliance issues early, within the first minute or so. Cancelling the test and sitting the patient back, then re-explaining the test before restarting. Submitting. The patient study ID should be entered into the notes section at the bottom of the screen. In order to submit visual field results, they will need to be printed out first so they can be anonymised. In this case, the patient details have been removed using a black marker, leaving only the patient study ID. The completed CRF and printouts should be scanned in and saved using a PDF format. 
please refer to the Study Manual of Procedures for full details of how to submit documents to the Neuro-Ophthalmology Reading Centre.